welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. Here we are early 2023, and we are just kicking off the year here, monitoring the Hylion story as it's um, evolved here in the new year. Um, got a little bit of churn. I think there's been a renewed sense of uh, optimism uh, from a small perspective. I, I do think that there are some headwinds here uh, in the first half of 2023 that we're going to have to navigate uh, from a macro perspective, I don't think it has a whole lot to do uh, with Hylion. I think from the company perspective, Hylion's going to do what they're going to do. Uh, and I think they've shown tidbits of progress toward that end. I think what I'm discovering with regard to this project, uh, which is not my sole project, uh, is that uh, once a week is uh, befitting the investors who have... Um, taken uh, an oath of faith, uh, taken a stake in this company for whatever reason, and try to define the psychology of owning the company and owning the stock, what it's meant, and try to frame uh, the proper perspective that's going to be necessary to see this thing through. I think from the perspective of how stock market investing can truly benefit an individual. I think, unfortunately, the approach is all too often very shallow from a retail perspective. I think had you made your investing decisions based on your excitement uh, around this investment perspective based solely on the stock action, you would have been shaken out of this a long, a long time ago. So what can we learn from it? What we can identify with is here we are at the end of January 2023, and we are in a very vulnerable time. If I'm going to give you my pulse and perspective that I think we have the worst to come or that we have transitioned through the worst with this company, I would contend that we are the latter, that we have went through the worst with this company. I say that standing on very shaky ground at this particular time. I spoke last week about the risk reward profile and helping investors truly identify with what level of risk is worth taking on at this point, as opposed to waiting. Um, entering into the stock, perhaps maybe at a higher stock price when there's more validation, that is the game that you play, uh, or investing now with the unfortunate uh, reality of Hylion not finding their place in the Class 8 space and, and being looked at as a viable solution going forward. I think either one of those outcomes are, I, I guess, feasible. Uh, and probably more accurately to say that they're possible. Feasible is a tough one. The reason why I would suggest that perhaps maybe we're moving off of the dungeon at this point and, and at least moving into a, a, a phase of a little bit more uh, normalcy with the stock action is because I keep coming back to as slow as the company is moving the positive reaction that Hylion is getting from the industry as a whole, okay? I also want to point out to stock owners in Hylion to suggest that we're just getting started if we've even started at all. A company is defined by the their ability to drive top-end revenues to drive profitability for shareholders and to do so in a consistent manner that gives uh, some sort of uh, predictable metrics around those capabilities to deliver on a solution, yes, but to also to drive profits for the company. We are so far removed from that. Um, it is very difficult to suggest that this preliminary phase um, is anything worth really getting overly excited about without some level of assurances to suggest that even the two years or just beyond two years in public markets 
and five years in private markets are going to lend itself to that end. The verdict is still out. Therefore, at $3.51 right now, the level of risk to reward, in all fairness, should be done at present. Don't take into account historical performance of the stock to base your determination on whether or not a $3.51 stock price is justified at this particular juncture. Um, look at it now. Look at what they need to do in the future. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I feel like the company, from a company outlook perspective, should be looking to do. Uh, this will provide a plain language explanation. Analysts must, must watch me and they're like, man, this guy's a complete idiot. Well, the idea here is that I'm not talking to other analysts. The idea here is speaking to people that I'm actually looking to embolden. Um, and that are people that are, are typically left out in the cold and not provided a fighting chance with regard to the lack of information that is available, um, the lack of information that retail investors have access to that I believe big institutions do have access to. I think it's unfair from the get-go. So if we can use our deductive reasoning and understand perhaps where, where the momentum is going with this company, even all, as early as a stage as we're looking at now, the potem potentially we can look at that momentum to capitalize on into the future. Okay. We make an educated guess. Okay. All kinds of things that we do in life. We take a chance at it. We start a business, whatever it is. It fails. This is no different. Okay. There is no guarantee in stock market investing. However, I do like the idea that there's only one Hylion holdings out there. Um, unless you want to go invest in Nikola, they've got Hyla now, um, which uh, just absolutely enthralls me. I, I don't uh, don't quite understand the blatant obviousness of, of that. Um, I need to look at that and see, but I just saw the picture and I, I couldn't believe what I saw. But to assist those retail investors that maybe hold a, a, a few dollars of, of shares in this company to understand what I'm going to be looking at, what I'm going to be uh, wanting to materialize over the coming quarters and years. Okay, this is not one of those things. And I know YouTube is a perfect conduit for this because a lot of people on YouTube want to come in and they want to find what's hot now. I've been doing stock market investing for most of my life, going all the way back until I was like 15 years old, okay? I have seen stocks come in and out of favor over the course of my entire life. And it, it can appear as if you've got that um, golden egg uh, only to see the stock succumb to the scrutiny of the markets, et cetera, saturation, which I think Tesla eventually could suffer from. Uh, and, and I think everybody's back on the Tesla tan bandwagon right now. Tesla is a fantastic story, and it's been a story that's evolved over the last 10 years. But this is a story that's just getting started, if, if, if it's even started at all. And I want the retail investor community that tunes into me to tune into me and demand uh, some level of explanation. Uh, some level of perspective that will help you potentially carry this thing through um, from a time commitment perspective that is going to be necessary to see this to its end. And whatever that end is, is going to need to be defined by you. Um, my first look, I've always defined at $100. And there's a lot of people who might think that's absolutely crazy. I think it's the most sane thing to be talking about where I think the potential of this company goes right now. Why is it not justified to talk about it with the greatest level of potent potential in the company, even if it's at $3.50? Remember what I said about using the current stock price as a metric to either say it's an opportunity at $3.50 or it's at $3.50, therefore I don't want to invest in it. I don't think that way. I don't think that way. Um, I look at my current share position, um, and I'm proud of the fact over the last 18 months, and especially over the last six months, have aggressively bought the shares down close to 
uh, rock bottom. And if it ends up being rock bottom, then I'll be a rock star uh, as far as putting the necessary ingredients together to make this what I think that it can be. And that is a, an absolutely phenomenal opportunity. I scour the landscape pretty aggressively to identify with developments of the company. And um, I've been relatively at ease, to be honest with you. I think uh, I'm seeing a renewed sense of um, a renewed sense of optimism, especially in the micro cap and the small cap space, especially the micro cap. Um, Hylion's now boasting its market cap at around six hundred and fifty million dollars. That's a little rich um, with regard to the the number one metric that I need to see in the company catalyst that I'll talk about a little later on in the video with regard to turning out meaningful revenue to the point where we can say, rest assured that the company can organically grow revenue internally uh, as opposed to lean. And I do say lean heavily uh, on the SPAC process that saw investors on the onset uh, lose a, a ton of money, a, a ton of money. Now, for those people that have held on, the verdict is still out as to whether or not that's a losing proposition or not. Um, I believe in hindsight, we'll probably look back on the SPAC area, era, and depending on the level of saturation that they're able to make in the Class 8 space, we'll look back at it and say, man, we were all wrong. They used the SPAC process for exactly what it was intended to do, and that is as an accelerator program to take a phenomenal idea and accelerate them into a market where there is demand and need now, as opposed to just remaining in public markets for you know, an unforeseen amount of years only to be subject to the scrutiny that is involved with the IPO process. Mm -hmm. Now that verdict is still out and I know there's a lot of venom and I know there's a lot of scars with regard to the SPAC process, um, I'd be lying if I would come onto social media and, and sit across from a YouTube audience and say that that was enjoyable. Um, I scoff at the people who are scrutinizing of me for echoing frustration through that process and not just taking it like a grain of salt, like every other retail investor is supposed to do. Mm -mm. I don't, uh, I don't play that. But here in 2023, I think we can all agree that there has been some fantastic uh, developments with the company with regard to continuing to solidify their order book. And the most recent one being with DSV. I think that was a good one. Now, there was a video that I just caught this morning that um, I watched it and I had mixed reactions on. Uh, I'll give you the good first. <laughs> I watched the video. I thought it was the best piece of content that I've ever caught through social media quickly to find out that I don't know where this content came from. I went to Wholesome's website. I went to Hylion's website, which I would have thought that either one of those two would have had a hint of this material because it appeared as if it was fairly new. Um, I, you know, I've been quick to, to, criticize Helion, who in all actuality, I'll give a compliment off first, found this video, released it. It's called Hylion and Wholesome. The video is drop dead phenomenal. I, I It's phenomenal. The disappointment comes for me is what the hell? Um, it seems like it would be, and this is presumption on my part, a video that was meant to be dropped for this Q4 earnings call. We are in quiet period right now with the company. It would only make sense to me that they would play something like that at the beginning of the earnings call, which Thomas Healy has been in kind of a habit of doing. I think it's great. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the Hylion story. But that wholesome Hylion video, now remember their orders got put in May of last year for 10 and probably more. Um, they were very excited to put in the order for 10 Hypertruck ERXs. Um, that's great. That just goes against the order backlog. There was a comment by one of the wholesome reps in this, what I could tell was a fairly new video. 
um, that they were looking to go from two to a hundred to a thousand. And I thought that really caught my attention. A lot of what caught my attention as well as the hood open, um, seeing, you know, agility's name, uh, on the fuel, the caps, uh, or the plugs, I guess, for the CNG fill or whatever it was, um, definitely seeing the, um, the, the PACAR, uh, filters on the generator. That was interesting. It just seemed like some new material. The reason I say that is because a lot of the material was filmed in New York City. So the the, the ride and drive footage, I think, was probably captured somewhere in the Austin area. But when they were filming the outside of the vehicle, those were the streets of New York City as they were driving the ERX through the streets. Um, I, I took the content just because I wanted it for my own personal archives. If you guys want me to we transfer you the file or you haven't seen it, I would recommend that you just catch it off of Helion's website. Um, again, I'm not a big proponent and I'm going to try to be above board with this because I, I understand and I've been made privy to some reasons as to why Helion does that. Um, however, the the approach on YouTube to just take content from somebody, put it through a YouTube channel, um, doesn't benefit the, the 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 originator of the content um and and i think to be original kind of speaks to what my threshold of requirement is on youtube uh, that's why when i got done viewing the content i thought first thing right off why didn't highly on release this or are they saving it to release for the earnings call what gives i, I don't know um andreas had the same question as i did i just attended the discord group just this morning over coffee um, and saw that there was a little bit of churn on where the source of this information came from it appeared to be very very new and it appeared to be um some incredible discussions on how it is that wholesome would be looking to uh, meet their decarbonization goals by 2030 by reducing uh, carbon uh, emissions profile by 24%, which is a pretty lofty goal. But I, I thought there was some real tells there on talking about highly on being that solution that could help them get to that end and a solution that could be put into the rigor of class eight like now. Um, I, I've made a, a strategic decision not to share that material uh, in the making of this video. Um, it's the only source of that uh, content anywhere that I can find. Um, I have some hesitation as to why I made that decision. Uh, like I said, if you're that hell bent on getting the file independent of of Helion's channel, uh, which is the easiest way to just go on and just search uh, Hylion and Wholesome, you can pick that up and you can view the material. But uh, I won't be releasing that through the content uh, would really like to uh, try to preserve the intent of what Hylion was trying to do um, by not making that publicly discernible. And, and again, I, I, I have questions as to how it slipped and why it slipped and why to that person directly. I, it's odd to me. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to choose to take the high road on this and, and allow you guys to view that content um, from, from the source of the content itself. I, thought it was amazing and probably one of the top five pieces of content that I've seen on Hylion uh, since then. Um, and I do give credit to Hylion, um, not necessarily the channel creator that pushed it through. If there's any credit to be had, <laughs> if they hacked into the Hylion database and pulled it, I, I, I don't know. Um, but there, there's a way to do business and there's a way not to do business. And as much as I appreciated the content, um, I, I was a little bit disappointed as to why Hylion wasn't the source uh, of the information being pushed out or they owned it and it's been leaked and released and, and released through YouTube. Um, nonetheless, I've viewed the video three times. I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, and it's a, just another nugget of a piece of information that uh, as a Hylion due diligence follower uh, would absolutely want to view uh, and scrutinize at your leisure. All right. I want to talk a little bit about the stock psychology, um, the evolution of the stock versus the company. If if you could invest in Hylion today without any knowledge, prior knowledge, 
of how we ended up into this position of a recessed stock price. I say recessed below the $10 initial stock offering, right? Um, recessed until we get back up to that 10, uh, which I think we can do with no problem. I really think that from now until the end of the year, I think we've got an interesting range here. I think we have tailwind. I think we have momentum. I think we have institutional investors sitting on an all-time high amount of highly on shares right now. That transition was inverse between the ownership of retail investors and institutions uh, alike. Uh, I would venture to guess that a lot of those retail investors that exited the position for whatever reason, uh, and they're free to do so, are in turn probably some of the people that uh, choose to go on to different venues and badmouth the company as if it's going to validate their personal investment decision to exit the stock when and when and how they did. Um, that's the beauty of independent investing. You can do what you want, when you want, how you want. You can either be happy about it or you can bitch about it. It's no problem. You get no sympathy from me, zero, none. I don't fluff that ass on YouTube. I just don't do that. Uh, people need more tough love in talking and understanding that stock market investing is business. It's business. Um, I've been emotionally charged on my scrutiny. I'd make a hell of an activist. Um, Nelson Peltz, I think he's awesome. He's hated. Boards hate him. They fight to keep him off of boards, but the guy's a stud. When companies go off kilter and they start to veer off, these activist investors, man, who see things from an outsider's perspective is like, you guys are ruining Disney. You guys are ruining Procter & Gamble. What the hell are you doing? You strategic board makers are, are not even historically tied in with the company. And here you are making strategic com uh, decisions about where you're going to take Procter & Gamble into the future when the Procter & Gamble that we've known and loved for the last 75 years is just fine. Leave it the hell alone. People are going to buy Tide no matter what. Mm -hmm. We don't wash our clothes at the river with the washboard anymore, at least here in the United States. We don't. At least I would opt not to. I would if I had to. But when we're talking about what it takes to own the stock, I think what will help a lot of retail investors out there is understand that forgetting about it at this point and focusing on the company is going to be your best chance of seeing this thing to something a little bit more material. Now, for me, this dollar and 44 cent increase from its base has been very welcome to me. I watched the stock in real time go all the way to $2 and six cents. And I had a, a premonition that we were gonna sink into oblivion. I did. I was willing to lose it all. I was willing to lose it all. My rubber band was stretched about as far as that rubber band could probably stretch. Um, and if it stretched more, it probably could have broke, could have broke. Mm -hmm. So as I watched this company go down to $2.06, the same company that without half of the catalysts that they've been able to generate over the last 24 months was at $58. Just a short two years ago, most people have forgotten that. Most people have either exited the company or they just look at this company now with the lens of being a $3.50 stock and that's it. Um, I do not. Um, I don't look at it as, as either a three fifty dollars stock um, or a $58 stock. I look at it like a $100 company because I know the numbers that they're going to have to shake out to inevitably, inevitably move from this 3.5% mark, 3.5%, not dollars, 3.5% toward my $100 goal. I'm 3.5% there. That's the way I'm going to look at it. And I'm going to talk about my personal conviction after I talk about the company outlook at the end of this video, it's really going to help you understand that if you have a little bit of imagination about the stock market investing game, 
it will help you immensely in understanding that it is not about just investing in the company, having it go down, and then being pissed off for the entire time that you own the company. It's not about that. That is a very shallow, elementary approach to stock market investing, and it is one that plagues retail investors. I totally get it. Um, it will be my life's mission for the rest of my life to fight this very perspective and understanding that if we can close the gap between even investing our own real dollars, investing with the philosophy that the institutions take into a company in that they have been increasing shares in Hylion, that is a fact. Why have they been doing that? Have they done that because they've looked at a $3.50 stock price and think that it's going to sink into oblivion? There's multi-millions of dollars with this new round of accumulation of shares where they've been able to buy up swaths of shares for very, very low. And if 206 is the low, then it will in fact prove to be the low in the company. My presumption is that we are beyond the, the, the worst of it. If that original investor presentation that I scrutinize all the time that was just dead wrong, if it's dead wrong now, are you saying that we have no potential to fill some of what was initially declared in that initial investor presentation going forward? Or are we just going to remain on a static plane where we pick up one, two, 10 orders over the next 10 years? Is that your presumption? Is that your hypothesis? Everybody's entitled to them. Okay. There are schools of thought out there that would suggest that Hylion will somehow dissolve, go away. Their cash burn will outplace their ability or outpace their ability to organically churn revenues uh, to support uh, cap and opex. You're entitled to your opinion. I only have $3.51 of kibbles and bits to chew on to actually spit back to you in reality and say, no, no, the company's still fine. We're worth $650 million, nothing too crazy. $650 million only just speaks to the fact that I don't think it's going to take that much to double to 1.25, 1.5 billion. And I know the numbers that they need to, to, to churn out to get, to get there. I think we're in between four and 5,000 units per year with the current MSRP of $400,000 to turn out, hell, I'd think jack it up to a half a million for all I know. Who knows? There's going to be some organic pressure uh, put on the fleets and the OEMs to acknowledge how important it is to pick a horse. And look, that demand is going to demand a premium. I'm sorry, if, he, if Hylion has a premium solution in the industry, why does that not why does that not put them in the driver's seat no pun intended to offer the product at a premium price this is business jack i mean if you want to tell me that hylion's going to cut a bunch of discounts and try to save a bunch of people's uh money at the expense of shareholder value thomas healy has outright said on multiple times and i wish he would say it more but i believe in the heart of hearts and he's going to do what's right and extract every penny out of that hyper truck ERX for the good of the share owners that he can. That's his job. That's his job. Drive share owner value. And I think by doing that, I think once these validations and small check boxes, rather large check boxes uh, on the evolution to commercialization is going only going to fortify that value when that final MSRP is agreed upon. MSRP has increased since we started uh, extrapolating the data, and I think it's fair to say that the number of units are anywhere between four and five thousand uh, for for that break in for that break even. That does not account for uh, the Carno innovation that's going to be necessary on the R and D side. But Hylion gets up to, I think I think they do it pre ten. I think they do a huge fundraise. I do. And there's going to be people out there that hate that I say that. They need to do that. They need to put a significant amount of money in the bank so that they can see this project through and fortify fortify that balance sheet. They need to fortify it. Right now, the most dangerous thing about Hylion is that they are working against borrowed 
money. I was going to say time, <laughs> but it's both, right? Um, and they need to fortify their staying power and make sure that they are in it for the long haul. Yes, generate churn. Yes, have a few years of really robust order growth. You know, I'd like to see it grow from four to five over the the next couple of years, up to ten and fifteen and north of that. If if we're talking about that, we're talking about a few hundred dollar stock here, guys, uh, approaching split level. Ryan, that's really irresponsible to be talking like that. Yeah, what's new? All right. What's new? Again, I entertain all possibilities. If you'd like to school me up on why we're somehow prohibited from speaking along these lines and speaking uh, very calmly on where I think we'll inevitably be and we'll reflect back on this time right now and say we had the answer right in front of our freaking faces. We had it right in front of our faces. We had Wholesome. We had Werner. We had Ruan. We had all of the major institutions. Budweiser has been down to the facility, all of them. And not one of them said, this is a solution that I'm not interested in. It was the contrary. It was one that suggested that they were A, interested in the solution, and number two, that they could implement that solution right away. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Now, I'll probably do that to an extent to suggest that, I, why didn't I buy more shares, yada, yada, yada. But I've done that with companies that I owned zero shares in. Why didn't I buy shares in them? I've watched them come and go my whole life. This is an opportunity right here that if Hylion executes along their business plan, 2023 is going to continue to be that bridge year. It is not going to be that catalyst year. And my friends, as we approach 2024 and 2025, the bridge will go away. They will have already crossed the said bridge to a point where the game is very, very simple. And it's going to be executing upon this company outlook that I'm going to disclose to you now that I think we're going to need to focus on. But I'm 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 welcome. I'm welcoming this current environment in in stepping into a little bit more firm footing with the stock and the company. I, I just have an instinct about where we are right now. Um, my scrutiny on Twitter has stopped with Hylion. Um, my praise on Hylion has stepped up because I honestly feel that whatever minutia had to have been gone through in 2021, 2022, I believe that the worst is behind and I believe that the best times are ahead. That's just my 100% opinion, 100%. You do not come here for my conjecture or my presumptions. I try to qualify my statements before I make a conjecture or a presumption. But my instinct tells me, based on everything that I'm seeing and the reception of the fleets, um, there was one piece of content that I believe was released this week by Silent Alert. Very interesting point, uh, putting the renewed focus on what I believe will be an important catalyst for Hylion in respect to their certification that is looming. Um, he made a point that that certification needs to happen and it needs to happen now. I thought it was smart. I totally agree with him. I absolutely agree with him 100%. Because where Hylion has not been subject to very much negative news at all, I mean, they've they've got out of this last couple of years pretty Scott clean, uh, and they've earned it. They need to be commended for their efforts. But if we stare down a, a catalyst that I've chalked up as a foregone certainty, and they can't achieve those certifications for major reasons, Houston, we we'll, we will have a problem. We will have a big, big problem. And it's one of those things that I would like to see put in the rearview mirror uh, as a step to ensuring that we have a commercially viable product because these numbers that I'm throwing out might be scary to some. They're not scary to me at all. Um, for me, uh, the company at $100 puts me into the multi-million dollar category. It'll be the, I'll be the funniest ass millionaire that ever comes on and still continues to talk about Hylion. 
I just enjoy the project a lot. Um, and I will be funny insofar as I'll still be brash. Uh, I'll still be the same old, you know, ugly old fella that comes onto YouTube and wears his, this is my favorite shirt. That's why I wear it in all my videos. It's my favorite. It's my most comfortable shirt. I wear it around the house all the time, but I will be a funny ass millionaire. No doubt about it. Um, just because it's not really about that to me. Um, if I'm able to build a legacy uh, for the family, uh, then I'll give them that legacy. Um, I truly am at a point <clears throat> in my life that I don't really care about amassing a wad and taking on the relation, uh, the reputation of somebody who needs to be viewed as somebody that is successful. I will be successful uh, by nature of the way that I got there um, and not necessarily for, okay, now I'm there and all, all of a sudden he he now uh, garners respect because he is there. Mm -mm. No, I deserve respect right now. I deserved it 20 years ago and I'll deserve it 20 years ago. The amount of pay dirt that I have in the bank is going to be really irrelevant when talking about that level of criteria in judging somebody's success and what they define as success in this life, okay? The company outlook going forward. Here's what I'm looking for. If 2023 is going to be a bridging year, I will take any catalyst that Silent Alert was talking about and many others. I've earmarked a few. Um, and I will take those with, with a grain of sand, okay? I'm good. We'll take those catalysts. Here's the company outlook over the coming years that we're going to want to continue to monitor and keep a close eye on revenue generation. Revenue generation for the full year 2022 is going to be in the, in the realm of 2 million bucks. I really don't see Q4 blowing anybody's socks off. Don't expect too much. I am not. I'm certainly not going to wait around until eight o'clock for the earnings to be uh, rolled out the next morning. Not going to do that. Revenue projections, something that we really need to keep an eye on to make sure that they can drive that top end revenue uh, and increase that top end revenue. What's going to come into the play here is not how much revenue they're able to generate, but how they're able to move away from 0% on their profit margins to somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30%. That's what's going to take to drive that bottom line profit that we're all inevitably waiting for. Four to five is kind of that break in, uh, that break even phase. Um, so keep that in mind in the figures that I'm looking at to actually meet that CapEx that they have an operating expenditure for a given year at around 135, 140, even call it 150. This is going to increase over time to make sure, and it'll increase over time uh, ahead of the top end revenue and bottom line profit projections to make sure that um, they can self-sustain because this is a growth company, okay? So we need to watch those metrics to see how they play into each other, all right? A big thing that was suggested in the wholesome video, and it's the first time that I've ever heard this from industry itself, this was the biggest takeaway, and I'm glad I remembered it so I can help you guys foot stomp, earmark that when you go over to Helion and watch the video it's the part where Wholesome is talking about other players in the industry buying the Hypertruck ERX and discussing that as a validation, which gives them the comfort to step into um, the new technology because industry has already stepped into it or certain players in the industry has already stepped into it. This is huge. This is the biggest hurdle that a young company will have to step over to get their product out there in the, in the industry and start that domino effect. Everything right now is mechanically generated. Everything is mechanically generated. It takes effort to generate that 10 order. A lot of effort goes into that, right? To generate that first block. But eventually what we want to see happen is that those orders, Detmar down in the oil sands region, uh, Wegmans up in upstate New York, 
driving around. I look all the time and I'm waiting to see my first Hylion vehicle in nature. I wish I would have known because I would have went downtown to film when they were here mocking around lower Manhattan. But that validation from a domestic perspective, Texas, California, Northwest, Midwest, even Canada, okay? We, we don't give highly on enough credit here for broaching international borders here. Now, this early on in this process, they are branching international, even if it is uh, with just Canada, okay? Those fleets are enormous, and I believe the Lafarge deal was based out of Canada, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but they're all over as well, and, and Wholesome is a global company, all right? So very, very important to see that fleet adoption is something that I'm going to monitor closely, and we are not in a position to determine that the dam has broken yet. We're not. The pressure is building. Uh, if it inevitably builds indefinitely and we never get that fleet adoption, then Hylion will continue to just be this uh, science project, um, uh, garage type of uh, uh, slap shop, you know, that, that deals with a small order churn every single year and fails to really get that profitability mark ever made. Because Hylion's not going to survive on 100 orders a year. They're just not going to do it. They know that. We know that. They've got to gin out orders in, in the rogues of thousands and dare I suggest even tens of thousands to make this a, a product that speaks to the penetration necessary in a class eight space that can handle that level of penetration for many, many years without even coming close to potential saturation. We are at the beginning stages of discussing how and where the fleets will be penetrated and it's going to take years and years and years to identify what fuels, what trucks, what technology, what companies are the best fit for the routes in question. We're years away from that. And it's going to be really fun to see how Hylion finds its niche uh, for fleet adoption. I know 1.5% or 1% penetration rate was used as the statistics on the original investor presentation, the one that I tear apart all the time, the one that they get a lot of scrutiny on. But who's going to has the, have the last laugh in this deal? If Hylion's able to garner close to 1% penetration, which is, ab which is absolutely doable, have they not met their mark? Is that not possible to do? If knowing everything that we know about the fleet excitement around the Hypertruck ERX thus far, is it not safe to say that they will have X percentage of percentage? I, I don't even want to put a number on it, okay? They don't need to garner that many orders to allow Hylion to survive. That's for sure. The question is, how are they going to execute on that plan? If they've got the goods, all they've got to do is find that penetration niche and go after it and continue to do some of the things that I'm going to talk about. Consistent increase in order flow. That's a given. We I, I talk about the four or 5,000. You know, we have over the course of the last two years, and this is where the risk factor comes in. This is where the bears step in and they say, look, over two years, you've been, you've been only able to generate, you know, 210 orders that are backed by uh, security deposits. And the thing about that is if, if, if half of those reservations end up falling off the table, but half of them end up coming to fruition, now we're, we're almost 30% toward what I contend they need on the order book to actually approach that break even for the year. That's pretty incredible when considering that you don't have any organic growth going on right now, um, rather all mechanical growth in that every order has to be booked individually. There's no fleets that are calling highly on right now and begging to get in the order backlog because they don't have a commercially viable product. They will. There's no vindication of to understand and Budweiser's out there running routes and their competing company, Molson Coors, see that they're flying the Hylion flag. They don't even know about it, ask about it, and want one too. 
I'll be damned if they're going to let their competition within the fleet have a strategic advantage without ginning up some questions. That's the organic growth that I talk about in the in the fleet adoption and to continuing to increase that order flow and book, all right? Um, I will throw a shout out. Again, I always try to incorporate these other channel content creators, but Excalibur talked about this very, very well in a nice breakdown of the OEM hub relationship with Hylion, uh fleet uh, maintenance responses to breakdowns and the different degrees of those responses. So shout out to Excalibur doing a fantastic job. I enjoyed the content. He learned me up on a on a phase that I was a little bit gray on, probably could have stumbled through with my, you know, my discretion and my common sense to understand that it would have been a tier structure. Uh, but uh, but to understand that a little bit kind of spoke to how Hylion is probably going to benefit more from the modular application that they have uh, instead of one that requires the run of a mechanical engine um, outside of the, the ice uh, generator. Uh, but how, you know, the levels of a of a failure on the truck doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be out there broke down on the road, subjected to repair facilities um, in that some of those uh, some of those can be troubleshot right on the spot. OK, so re really cool stuff. And shout out to Excalibur, man. Keep up the good work. I'm, I'm on your team, brother. Uh, full support all the way. That's great. The last thing I think we need to look at with the company outlook here is innovation. Um, there's been some tidbits of uh, offerings to suggest that the Carno can be put into different applications. I think the Carno Hypertruck ERX is going to be a, a, a crazy, crazy thing to see into the future. That's off in the distance, man. That's on the shelf right now. We're so fixated on the Hypertruck ERX, which is excited, exciting in and of itself. What about this idea that the Carno brings to the table to allow the fleets to use whatever the freak fuel they want? That's an effing game changer. That's freaking sick, man. Disgusting. Well, General Electric didn't want the technology, so they chopped it to Hylion. Are you effing kidding me? Are you that retarded? I, I Seriously, I, I see some pretty interesting scrutiny of Hylion, man. And it's like, do you just look at everything in your life and just think that it's all bad? <laughs> it's as if these people, man, from a psychological perspective, they just look unhappy. They just look unhappy. I, I just don't get it. You know, okay, all right. So they paid thirty-six million dollars for this technology, and it goes nowhere. What have you lost? Nothing, nothing. If they actually make something of it, the ability to create cheaper energy <laughs> is insane. The the you think of the ability of the Carno to rethink the entire generator industry. That's what type of technology they've got on the shelf right now. And it's not mentioned very often. $3.51? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'll keep that value proposition on the shelf until the Hypertruck ERX um, can gen up some of the company outlook pieces and attributes that I think that they are going to uncover over the next couple of years. And if you're holding your breath for 2023, guys, I'm just going to set you up for failure so you can be surprised by success. Think about it, um, internalize it, chew on it, smell it. I don't care. Rub it in your face if that's what you need to do. 2023 is one that I consider to be a bridge year, at least to the midpoint in the year. That that's that's my personal intuition. That's my personal thumb on the pulse. Where I think we are, all of 2022 was engulfed in this bridging philosophy. And I knew that based on the information that we had progressing along the check uh, list that Thomas Ely uh, had set the the uh, expectations on, that there's no way that we would be uh, incurring major milestones in the first half of 2023. That's just my problem. It's like, okay, we got to get patient on the deal. That's just what we got to do. If you don't like that, no problem. Expect more and then be disappointed. Uh, I, I just, based on the information that I have in front of me, am communicating to you guys that I think 2023, if we end up at a six, seven, eight dollar stock price, I'm going to be absolutely freaking overjoyed. If we end up at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I'm going to be jumping up and freaking down, baby. I'm going to be jumping up and freaking down because I will know that we're probably far removed to the base 
to never actually talk about this phase of the company. And then we can move on and we can talk about the new phases. Some of the things that my company outlook will change over time as we evolve. Guys, you don't think in five years, we're going to look back on this and laugh a little bit because five years from now, we're going to be looking at a highly on holdings that is a completely different company than where we are we are right now. Remember when we were talking about Carno as just being a concept where they acquired the 3D printers, the in-house IP, and, and the actual uh, the, the technology itself? <laughs> Look at it now. Look at it now. They were able to do a massive funding raise. And, and I think they should go for $750 million. That's what I think they're going to go for. That gives them the $100 million to do all the R&D on the Carno. This is just me spitting a bunch of BS and garbage. However, I don't think I'm that far off. Because for the people that disagree with me, that, that Hylion is going to seek out a, a, a funding round, you guys are you guys you guys are sorely mistaken. Okay, if you think that this four hundred million is going to carry them to the rapture, it ain't going to happen. All right, they need more capital. They need more capital to solidify their book, to allow them to bridge to that consistency, to allow those margins to expand. That margin expansion is the key to Hylian's business. If we're not working in a range of 20 to 30%, then we are going through a lot to put a pretty badass truck out there for not a lot of money. Not a lot of money. Hylian's got to be making 25% of every truck that they turn out. They're going to make zero on the first few. They're going to make zero. They're, gonna, they're not going to make squat on these ones that they're taking into Austin. That's something that I wish Excalibur would have talked about in the video. But it's important to understand that the very means to an end to get to the OEM line is that very uh, lesser of two evils. That's what we need to do. And that's what I believe we're going to do at the end of this year and into 2024. I think 2024, I've yet to define what I expect in 2024, um, but you guys will have to stand by for roles and I will continue to monitor uh, how the story evolves and I will let you know when those certain phases uh, have been achieved uh, and we can actually close the book on those certain phases uh, as we march into a different phase of the company's evolution. We are still in the bridging phase. I've said that now for many, many months. I still feel like we are squarely in the bridging phase and there needs to be a few catalysts that turn out before I dub us out of the bridging phase at this point. As we close down the video, I wanna give you my personal conviction, okay? What I just gave you were the company outlook attributes, things that any investor or any uh, 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 steward of the space, if you're not a share owner in the company, we don't discriminate. Um, it's a value play to come in and, and, and listen to an opinion like mine free of charge, okay? You don't have to own shares to have a, a special seat at the table. It doesn't work that way. This is social media, okay? You can consume content where you think there's value to be added, or you can shut it off when you think it's a complete and utter waste of your time, okay? This is my personal conviction. This is what helps me understand how Hylion fits holistically into my repertoire, okay? This is my stuff, right? The solution. I still contend that the solution is the best solution out there. I believe that by nature of having the charging unit on board does something that no other solution does, and that is free themselves from the restrictions that are created from being dependent upon the grid. The solution. I think the idea of bringing a generator to charge the onboard batteries to drive the E-axle is novel enough of an idea to question why the trucking industry didn't think about this or did think about it and thought it was a dumb idea and therefore Hylion goes away because it inevitably is a dumb idea, I, I don't think so. My conviction lies with the very solution, and I do include the Carno technology. If you're invested in Hylion, guys, you're invested in the Carno as well. Even though I contend that it is a technology that is on the shelf right now, you are invested in the Hypertruck ERX, you are in, invested in the Carno technology, and you are invested in the hybrid EX product, okay? You are invested in that. I love all their solutions. I think right now the horse 
is with the Hypertruck ERX. I think that's where a lot of the interest lies. I think it fits a lot of applications. I think it's going to be exciting to monitor how much penetration they get with what I believe currently is their flagship product. I do. So the solution for me makes it very, very easy. I'm invested in a lot of companies, guys, a lot of companies. Okay. A lot of them do cloud software computing. A lot of do data centers. A lot of them offer products. A lot of them are soft drink and beverage companies. Uh, a lot of them are cruise companies. Um, I'm in some of my, you know, cutting of the edge technology along this ESG front, which if I can codify my bullish spirit right now, I think there's going to be a massive amount of wealth created in the ESG uh, for the good of the planet initiatives, whether it be plastic recycling, whether it be lowering carbon emissions footprints, uh, uh, the ability of companies to operate cleaner. I think there's going to be a massive transition within the coming five to 10 years. And I think maybe within that five years, we're really going to start to see some of the churn along this front. Hylion is right there with that bullish conviction that I have, okay? The movement that I speak of, and this is my second point, is just that. I think we are moving to a place where enough is enough. We've probably harmed the planet too much for the pursuance of profit, okay? We've all, always agreed that we don't want to stymie progress. We don't want to hamper uh, technological developments, and we do not want to hamper the progress of our businesses out there that are trying to bring product to customer in the most efficient of ways. What we are looking at now is evaluating the old school way of getting said uh, products to customers and asking the rhetorical question, is there a better way? Is there a better way? And I sense that now in 2023 is a time where, from a global perspective, industries, owners of businesses, CEOs, boards of directors, investors, customers, consumers, all agree that this is a direction that people have to go. Industry, uh, uh, um, global companies, need to march in this way for the good of the planet. It is not acceptable anymore to just operate in a way that does not acknowledge the responsibility that these companies have been built over the last hundred years in some cases, have been built on practices that have not been conducive to the environment. The damage that has been done, what what rep what um um, what type of remedy do these companies owe the planet for building up these businesses in the capacity that they have? I'm thinking of reparations is the idea, right? Well, they understand and have taken on a responsibility that the time is now to start to implement some of these technologies. My personal contention is that they will still not adopt technologies that are uh, 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 hampering of their business plan. It's not going to happen. They're just not going to do it. But I do feel like we were in a transition time right now, and there is a movement toward uh, a greener future. My my third point and my final point is uh, is my current financial position. Um, do I think Hylion is good for everyone? No. No, I don't. I don't. There's going to be people out there that completely disagree with me and they're like, you're saying I can't own the stock. Okay, sucker, I'm going to go buy a thousand shares. And those people might just make an insurmountable amount of money. Um, I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm saying is don't do that if you can't handle what is necessary to go into an investment like this. Okay. We're at a time right now where the stock has run up quite handily. I think it's up close to 50% anyway. Um, this is just the beginning. 50% is nothing. It means nothing to me. I'm more nervous of the fact that I don't think they've had enough news to generate 
the churn. Perhaps maybe the story's catching on. Maybe there's something that we don't know about that's been released on the inside. That's a distinct possibility. Who knows? Don't care. Um, not really that encouraged by the most recent move. Um, you start to see some real catalysts for me where I feel like I can see my eye on the prize, which I can't right now, then then I'll be I'll be happier for it. But with a, with regard to the way I've approached this, Hylion is not my only holding. Um, I see tweets all the time come through Twitter and it's like, yeah, 68% of my portfolio is Nicola. That's insane. Um, and it's one of those things to where I wish I could put like a um um, a filter on that type of garbage because people see that stuff, man, and they think that it's okay. And I'm here to tell you that tried and true fundamentals of investing would absolutely govern you against that type of thinking um, as opposed to building a well-diversified portfolio for yourself that makes sense for you in achieving your financial goals, okay? Okay. Take $50,000 of your life savings at 55 years old and dumping it into Hylion might not be the best move for you. What if Hylion goes out of business? You've now just lost your life savings. Mm -hmm. And you have to invest with that possibility. Well, Ryan, why do you come on every week and talk about Hylion? You talk as if it's a for sure thing. No, I don't. Um, you're seeing what you choose to see if that's what you're choosing to hear from me. When in all actuality, in English, I say all the time, this is where it is right now with regard to it being on the shakiest ground. The total profit potential that will be made will made at its maximum, at its maximum low, and it will be made at selling at its maximum high. Let me tell you what, guys, there's nobody on this earth that can do that with consistency. It doesn't exist, okay? Did I buy the stock with a two in front of the stock price? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Did I buy at 206? No, I did not. No, I did not. But I bought it with a two in front of it. I have bought with multiple injects into the company. I've buffered my position. And here we sit. Um, I've declared my share position. It's increased from 12,500 that I've previously disclosed. I'm sitting on closer to 16,500 shares now. Um, and that's just where we've shaken out. I have not bought stock uh, for the last five weeks. I refuse to buy the stock when it goes up every day. Um, and if that just so happens to be my final share count on the appreciation ride to where I think that it could go, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, but I will continue to update you guys on that. Um, I'm long the shares. So really doesn't dominate my weekly address. Uh, rather speaking about more the psychology of owning the company for the benefit of that retail community out there that I think does still exist, uh, even though the inverse relationship is that right now we've got a lot of institutions on our side. And quite frankly, I'd rather have institutions on my side than a bunch of retail investors. Um, no offense, but most retail investors have no idea how to invest and they shouldn't even be dabbling uh, in this opportunity or opportunities like this. They should just go buy the major indexes and go and do what it is that they're good at because they are not good at retail investing. They've shown that for decades, and I'm looking to change the idea going forward that it takes a rock-solid mentality to make it in this game, and to make it in this Hylion game is going to take that rock-solid application to see it through. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the weekly update. Very cool stuff. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, man. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would invite you to do so now. Hit the notification bell. You'll be notified of future videos that I upload to YouTube. I do a Friday live stream every single Friday. I'm glad to do that product. You're cordially invited. Do a lot of cool content on the channel, man. It's 2023. I've uh, evolved this channel to what it is now, uh, and I'm having a blast doing it, and I'm glad that you're part of it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message, and good luck in your investment future.